You're using Illustrator all wrong. I'm sorry, that came out harsh. I'm just saying, since the introduction of Illustrator 2025, or version 29 if you prefer, you should be using the software in a few fundamentally different ways. To illustrate my point, I'm gonna show you 10 things you should start doing differently today. Number one is ungroup all, which allows you to take a group and absolutely blast it apart, including all nested subgroups. So consider this drawing from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. It's great insofar as it goes, but let's say I want to separate out the blue thick lines right here. Then I'd click on either horse or rider. They're all grouped together as witnessed by the word group over here on the far left side of the control panel. I'm always hopeful that I can go to the object menu and choose ungroup once and only once. But of course, I still have groups. And so if I twirl open this layer, you can see that there are just so many groups. Nested groups like the horses for some reason, nested several groups deep along with its shadow and then we have useless groups like this one that contains a single path outline i have no idea why that is but i know the solution which is to right click and choose ungroup all and you are done that just absolutely blows it apart then i'll deselect the artwork click on one of the blue paths click select similar objects and then press control or command g to group those and then i can move them to a different location or just turn them off my only complaint is we do not have a commensurate feature for clipping groups if you run into an unnecessary clipping group you're still gonna have to take it apart manually. New feature number two applies to the swatches panel, by the way. So if you wanna create a gradient, you no longer have to bring up the gradient panel and slavishly drag swatches onto this gradient bar. Instead, you can just click on a gradient or a swatch, pardon me, and then shift click on another swatch to select you know, three or more, let's say, and then click on the flyout menu icon and choose this guy right here, create gradient, and it's done. You now have a gradient just like that. I'll switch it to a radial gradient and I'll save it as, let's say, blues, a new swatch. And then I'll go ahead and click in the background and apply my new gradient like so. Now, speaking of gradients, new feature number three. You can now take gradient swatches along with pattern swatches and, of course, solid colors and group them. Yes, groups now accommodate things other than solid colors, which of course they always should have, but now they do. And so I'll just go ahead and call this guy collection. Now, something that is not compatible, a new feature that is not compatible with gradients or patterns is new feature number four, this guy right here. I'll bring up the flyout menu once again. There it is create swatch info, but it's dimmed. And that's because it only works with solid color swatches. So what I'm gonna have to do is control or command click on all the gradients and that pattern swatch to turn them off. And now it's available. You know what, it should always be available and then just like ignore the stuff that doesn't work with it anyway. I'll go ahead and choose the command, then you answer a bunch of questions and then it automatically creates this new layer. Isn't that awesome? And it documents all of your swatches that are selected, by the way, at which point I can see that I forgot to name my main shade of brown. Now, before we get to new feature number five, which is generative shape fill, this guy right here, won't you take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications? After all, this is the kind of information with which I'm going to be hitting you each and every week. All right, with this shape selected, something basic, I'm going to click on that button and then paste in a prompt, at which point, by default, Illustrator is going to offer some more stuff, and it could be with a view of the mountains. Why not? I'll go ahead and click generate at that point to let her rip. And I want to make it clear that even though Adobe considers this to be a beta feature, I'll go ahead and hide those edges. It does cost a credit for these three variations right here. And it is, by the way, a special kind of independent object. Notice that. So if I wanted it to blend in with my 
my original hourglass icons, then or outlines that is, then I would change the blend mode to multiply like so, which reminds me of some more stuff you can do. I'll click on this hourglass shape, same shape, of course, and I'll click the button and paste in a different prompt. This time I'm looking for a reflective glass onion windows with steel supports. And if you have the properties panel up on screen, then you can see the wireframes build. Notice that right there, which I think is pretty interesting. And then once again, a moment later, we see the three variations. Now let's say I want to build on top of those. So I'll apply multiply once again. This is an independent object. Just want to make that clear. And then if what you do is you go up here, click in a prompt and replace it with a totally different prompt. This time sand with castle falling through our glass into a pool with a great white shark then what's going to happen is that Illustrator is going to build an entirely different object. There are the wireframes. And then notice this guy. He's so jolly. We have the three variations, but I really think I like this first guy the best. He is independent. He, she of the glass onion in the background. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply multiply to it as well in order to get this effect right here. At new feature number six, we have mockups, which allow you to preview how your artwork might appear as merch. And so notice that I have a couple of different variations going on where my hourglasses are concerned. And if ever you want to go back to a previous variation, then go to the window menu and choose generated variations right here and you'll see a whole slew of them, depending of course on how many you made. But in any event, I want to take this left hand item right here and put it on a mug. So I'll turn off a bunch of layers, turn on this one. Notice that I've grouped all this artwork together and I have a mug, a photographic mug right here. You don't have to have a separate photograph, by the way. You can use one of Illustrator's predefined templates. That is going to take an extra moment, however. Notice that if I go to the object menu and there it is, choose mockups followed by create mockup, that Illustrator has to spend a little bit of time reading the content tours of the photographic image and then I'll see it applied like so at which one I can just kind of drag this guy around notice that and we've got this oval that's surrounding the artwork so if I drag one of these handles while pressing the shift key I will constrain my scale like so if I move my cursor very close to one of the handles I can rotate it as well and then drag it around by the way if you click off the artwork and then you click on it again you're going to lose those handles but all you have to do is click on this guy, edit content, either up here in the control panel or in the properties panel if you prefer. And then I can create my own special mock-up by clicking on this plus sign right there. And it's going to add it. So I can access this mug in the future. At new feature number seven, we have objects on a path, just like text on a path, except a little bit different. I'm going to hide the mock-up panel and select all. And then you just want to click on this new tool down here, at the objects on a path tool, and then click on the objects upon which you want to put the paths. Now, oh, hey, real quick. Want to learn more about objects on a path, not to mention the newly enhanced image trace feature then join my patreon which is patreon.com slash geek now we're talking two distinct absolutely in-depth videos plus more than a hundred others with lots more coming at you each and every week once again that's patreon.com slash geek now my one complaint is that why do we see the path outline? We, 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 we automatically hide it with text on a path, but in this case we see it. So just go ahead and double click in order to enter the isolation mode and change that stroke to none like so and then escape out. But I've got a larger problem. This is the EU and I've left Britain in. I've got to get it out of there. And so what I'm going to do is twirl open my layers panel and then I'll twirl open this new objects on a path object that's really what it is. And then there's Britain right at the top, so I'll just drag it out. 
of that object like so and it doesn't look like it's gone but click off of it and now you can drag it away now i don't want it to be at this angle so i'll click on transform up here and change the rotate value to zero but i do want to take portugal and move it into the eu and so i'll scroll up my list right here collapse this guy and grab this green square and drag it in and notice there it is there's portugal right where i want it but let's say it's like quite at the right location well then i could drag its center handle this round widget right here to between sweden and finland and now for new feature number eight i'll zoom out a little bit and i'll switch over to the artboard tool right here and in the past you've been able to move elements on the artboard along with the artboard and you've been able to copy them but now you've got this thing right there which lets you scale them which is this such a small thing but such a huge thing notice now that i can scale the artboard to any side as i like it doesn't even have to be proportional like so of course i wouldn't want that but i if i wanted a proportional scale then all i would need to do is press the shift key and i'm scaling artboard and artwork all at the same time at new feature number nine we have another tiny little new feature that is so very important let's say i want the word is to drop down to the next line then i could go ahead and backspace like so to get rid of that space there before the word is and press shift enter in order to knock that down to the next line but let's say i just want to make sure is and already all always stick together then what i would do instead is move my cursor right here backspace that space right click choose insert white character and in, and then choose non-breaking space and the deed is done now these two words will never depart from each other and my quote right here lines up nicely it's flush right with the e and wild and then finally at number 10 new feature number 10 is a knife tool that doesn't suck so bad as it has in the past and so let's say i want to take this hourglass shape right here and i want to split it in two there's a bunch of different ways to do it but don't grab by the way when i talk about the knife tool don't grab the slice tool that's a different tool entirely we want this guy it's in the same flyout menu as the eraser tool the knife tool right there and you can just drag like so that's what you've been able to do forever it's just so lame like the, i don't just don't understand why it was ever put together this way in the first place and then if i switch back to the knife tool which doesn't have a keyboard shortcut because it's not traditionally a good tool you can press the alt key or the option key on a mac and drag in order to draw a straight line and that way if i switch back to the black arrow tool i have now severed the shape in twain like so but let's say i want to split it right down the middle why then i'd go up to the view menu this is new and and I would choose smart guides. So, so the, the knife tool has traditionally been so stupid, it doesn't pay any attention to, to smart guides. Now it's smartened up ever so slightly. And so what you would do is move your cursor above this point, not on it, but a little bit above like so, because otherwise it won't cut properly. And then press the Alt key, the Option key on the Mac. Make sure that you've got an intersection like so. And then alter option drag and you can press the shift key as you do so just to constrain the angle. And now for once in the life of this tool, I found a use for it. I can now break my hourglass in two. And so I know, right? A lot of new features that are gonna change the way you work, possibly mere seconds from now. Agree, disagree? comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications and for two entirely different videos one in which i show you more ways to exploit objects on a path and another about the new and improved image trace join me at patreon.com slash deke now and then scurry over to deke.com and sign up for my absolutely free newsletter i'm deke mcclellan this is deke now